Like Babylon, Jezebel is intriguingly mentioned in Revelation. So like Babylon, this means there's a Jezebel spirit that hasn't ever gone away and won't go away until God deals with it directly at the end of time. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets. Notice that phrase at the end. God refers to Satan's deep secrets. This is a direct reference to the secret serpent knowledge from Eden that forms the basis of the mysteries that occultists are so anxious to know. Now obviously the literal person of Jezebel is not going to be present in Thyatira as she died thousands of years ago in 2 Kings in the Bible. The reference is a prophetic parallel. Just as John the Baptist was Elijah because he came in the spirit and power of Elijah, this person or influence in Thyatira will be under the spiritual control of the same demonic influences that controlled Jezebel. Thus there is a type of demonic influence in society today and the church because this passage in Revelation 2 was written to the church that can rightly be called by the name Jezebel. This demonic spirit existed long before Queen Jezebel and indeed goes back to Samiramis. But Jezebel was so totally controlled by its nature that she has become its namesake. We also know far more about the characteristics of the spirit through Jezebel than Samiramis because her story is recorded in 2 Kings. But whatever is true of the nature of Jezebel was true of the nature of Samiramis because they were both controlled by the same spirit. The spirit of Samiramis is the spirit of Jezebel, which is the spirit of Astarte or Ashtoreth or Asherah, which is the spirit of witchcraft. In scripture, Herodias is also a type of this force. As Jezebel opposed Elijah, so Herodias opposed John the Baptist. So what about this Jezebel spirit? A Jezebel spirit, above all, seeks domination and to achieve this end, she uses manipulation and intimidation. Now, although Jezebel is commonly referred to as a she, as a spirit, she can exhibit behaviours that are associated with both males and females. For example, people who recognise they are weaker than those they seek to control tend to use manipulation. This is normally true of females who may use tears, hurt feelings and emotional guilt to get what they want. People who feel stronger than those they want to control tend to intimidate. This is more characteristic of men who may use strength violence or other forms of intimidation to control others for their own ends. Different methods, but the same goal, domination. This is the definition of witchcraft. The Jezebel spirit will use manipulation while she feels she's in a position of weakness, but once she has acquired the power, will switch to intimidation. We can see this in the way she threatened to murder Elijah, and I keep referring back to our plan A and plan B concept. Plan A is the female manipulative way to dominate and plan B is the masculine violent and intimidating way to dominate. Interestingly, the female method is far more socially acceptable in modern society. I once heard a girl boasting that she could get guys to do anything she wanted. All she had to do was lure them with her beauty, which is the essence of femininity, and she had them in the palm of her hand. What she didn't realise is that the guy could equally use his superior physical strength which is the essence of masculinity, to force her to do what he wanted, but he didn't. So if the guy didn't dominate her with his strength, perhaps she shouldn't dominate him with her beauty. But the subtle feminine method of control is considered almost normal in society, and so it goes on all the time unchallenged. Overt intimidation and violence, on the other hand, will put the perpetrator in jail. Spiritually, Christians should view both forms as equally offensive, both are aiming for domination and control over another person, which is witchcraft. Now referring back to the Jonathan Livingston Seagull example, where the demons behaved like seagulls as they were being expelled and had taken on the characteristics of the thing from where they had originated, we can conclude that since the Jezebel spirit originated with Semiramis, it would follow that it has her characteristics. 
This spirit, therefore, seems more comfortable operating through women and initially tends to establish control without the use of actual physical force. She is more easily associated with classic feminine persuasion techniques, and the Bible always refers to her as a woman. You will often find the Jezebel spirit trying to get close to those who already have control. Proverbs says, Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. For she has cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. Her house is the way to hell, descending to the chambers of death. Scripture emphasizes that the intended target of the spirit is strong men. It primarily targets men with leadership skills or powerful positions such as Nimrod and Ahab. But in reality she has a deep hatred of true spiritual authority and will always seek to replace it with illegitimate authority. She will do this through emotional pressure, witchcraft and obsessive sensuality. But make no mistake, lust and sex are merely tools to weaken others in order for her to accomplish her goal. The subtle persuasions of femininity are used only to gain influence and to get close to those in control. She then uses this position to gradually dominate. In the Hebrew, the name Jezebel means literally, without cohabitation. She will not live with those she cannot dominate and control. She will have no equals. We saw evidence of this when Semiramis ordered the death of Nimrod and plotted to do the same to Tamutz. There are no ends she will not go to in order to gain and keep control. It is what Jezebel wants more than anything. Domination is always satanic and stands in contrast to the example given to us by Jesus, the servant king, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Even when Jezebel appears to be submissive, it is usually out of carefully wrought plan to gain influence. In 1 Kings 21.8 we read, Jezebel wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent them to the elders and nobles of the city. This tells us that she prefers to remain concealed in the background while she manipulates situations and leaders, a hidden hand behind the public figure, just like Satan is the king of Tyre pulling the strings behind the prince of Tyre. The power of the spirit of Jezebel should not be underestimated. For seven years God had carefully and miraculously protected Elijah from Ahab's armies. God had even commanded ravens to feed him in the wilderness. He had supernaturally met all his needs. In the Mount Carmel showdown, Elijah called down fire from heaven and resoundingly defeated and killed the priests of Baal. All Israel fell at his feet in repentance, worshipping the true God. Elijah was one of the mightiest prophets of God that the world had ever seen. He was vindicated and victorious. And yet it took a single threat from Jezebel to send Elijah spinning into anxiety and even depression. He fled to the desert and begged God to kill him. Think about this, because naturally speaking, it makes no sense. Elijah enjoyed supernatural protection for seven years, watched fire fall from heaven, saw his enemies defeated, and still Jezebel could bring him to this condition with a single threat. This is an example of Jezebel's power to intimidate and strike fear into the hearts of men, causing them to withdraw. Jezebel will try to steal your vision. Jezebel will even make you depressed and anxious when there is nothing significantly different in your circumstances. And if there are difficult circumstances, this spirit will tell you that they are insurmountable, impossible and overwhelming. Jezebel will make you feel like dying when in reality, you are God's man of the hour. Spiritual life may seem irrelevant and pointless. You may lose the desire to pray and the faith to try. Demonic voices will tell you it's all hopeless. You may suddenly find yourself in unreasonable anxiety, fearing tragedy or death, pessimistic and cynical. Much of what is called depression is actually Jezebel. Jezebel wants to paralyze with fear, condemnation, depression, apathy, or whatever it takes until we withdraw. The only answer for those under Jezebel's attack is perseverance in battle. And remember, the God who resoundingly defeated Baal on Carmel can do the same today.